All right. So Sophie and I are talking about something that I think a lot of us who are course creators deal with. Um, when you first launch a course, and Sophie and I have both had this experience, when you first launch a course, you tend to get the most number of signups uh, from your audience. And then, um, you know, when, you know, some, I, Sophie, I think you do this as well. I, I teach the course live while I'm also recording it. And then after I finish teaching the course live and it, the course is complete and it's been recorded, then it goes on my website and I sell it uh, as an evergreen product. Evergreen means that people can buy it evergreen anytime uh, rather than have to show up to a session or something like that. So they can buy the recordings at any time. And uh, you know, Sophie and I have both noticed, hey, when it's evergreen, we only get sales every now and then, you know, dribs and drabs. And even when we try to launch, relaunch the Evergreen course, like Sophie, you have tried doing live webinar to relaunch the Evergreen course or a discount or other, maybe other things, that it's still not as many sales as, as the original launch. So I want to assure you from 12 years of launching more than 30 different courses, and, I, I've, and I'm probably being conservative because even, even right now on my website, there are 21 courses. So taught in the last three or four years so over 12 years i've launched you know well above 30 courses and i've noticed that it is always always the case has been always the case um and you and i are in different industries so you can take that as another data point that even in my industry a very different one than yours it's also the case that when i launch a topic for the first time i get a lot more sales than when i launch it the second time and the third time and the fourth time etc the, here's, here's why this, I think this is why it happens. Because most of the people who would buy that topic have already bought. And so unless you dramatically grow your audience from the first launch to the second launch, if your audience has doubled or something like that, then maybe the second launch will get as many or more sales than the first launch. So how do we, the question is, well, then how do we dramatically grow <laughs> our audience between the first and second launch? Uh, there, are, there are two ways of doing it, okay? One way is to delay the second launch for several years, <laughs> right? You, you launched in, you know, first year, you launched a course, a topic, and then you don't launch it again for three or four years. And by the three or four years, by that time, by the time it rolls around, when you launch that topic again, your audience will have grown. If you are doing, you know, the kind of marketing that we talk about, your audience will have grown. But secondly, your audience, even those who bought in the past or who saw it three or four years ago, it feels fresh to them again. So now they're more likely to, to buy it. If they didn't buy it the first time, they might buy it now, or some of them might even buy it again because they want to engage with you live again in that topic. So that's the first strategy, which is what I've been doing now, uh, especially starting from now going for into the future. I now have a four year cycle because now I, I, I basically have 21 topics and I now have a, have a cycle where I teach um, six courses a year. This is actually starting next year. Um, we're recording this at the end of one year and we're going. So starting next year and onward, I have a four, I have a, I have a six course cycle each year, six launches each year. So I have 21 topics, six, it's approximately every four years I reteach something. Plus each year I get to experiment with one or two other new topics just to see if it's, if, if it might work. So that's one, like I said, there's two strategies here for you, Sophie, actually three, I want to give you three. One is to, you need to wait longer before you launch that topic again. And you just need to launch other topics in between, new topics, until just like me, you now you eventually get to 20 topics or more, okay? Then you get like, oh, I very comfortably have a, have a every four year cycle, right? And in fact, right now, I wanna show you something. Um, right now I am launching a course that the last time I taught it was three, well, actually, no, this course, there's an exception. I actually taught it last year as an evergreen relaunch, which we'll talk about. But I, I said in my post that I'm not gonna teach it again 
for another four years. And I, and I am, I'm serious about that. I, I, I really do mean that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to share my screen in just a moment with you. I'm just finding the post to, to, to show, to show you here. And um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. <laughs> so the next time I'm doing this live, besides what's listed below, is four years from now. You know, if you really want to engage me live in this process, consider joining us for this round. And, and by the way, some people use that as a marketing tactic and because they, they'll say that, but then they'll decide, oh, I'm just going to teach it again next year. I really mean that because I have a schedule. <laughs> I have so many topics I want to reteach. I, I, I can't, I, how do I fit it in if I'm only doing six launches a year? So it, it, for me, it's, it's a natural constraint that, well, I can't teach this again for four more years because I have so many others. Okay, so, um, so that's one strategy, right? You got to wait longer. The second strategy is that you need to relaunch courses with enough JV partners, joint venture partners. Because like I said, there's only two reasons. There's only two ways a, a relaunch can, can have as many sales. One way is you wait a long time and the second, and keep doing your marketing and grow your audience. The second way is to borrow other people's audiences. That's it, right? Because you've already, your audience has already seen it. And unless you wait four years, they're not going to sign up again, or very few of them will, because they've already seen it. They've already made that decision that this topic is not for me. They've already told you. You see what I mean? Let's say you got 70 sales. Well, you have 1,000 people in your audience. The, what happened to the other 930 people who didn't say yes to the course? You 70 bought, 930 people didn't buy. Some of them didn't see it, or some of them didn't see it enough time. But, um, but a lot of those did see it and made the decision, no, this is not right for me or not right for me at this time. Maybe four years later, it will be right for them. Okay, so, so, so that's a second strategy is to borrow audiences by having a lot of JV partners. JV stands for joint venture. All it means is that you have friends and you have colleagues who have a, a, a right enough audience that you are going to announce the course to their audience. Of course, why would they let you do that? Well, because they are they are a friend or a colleague, and maybe you are trade you are trading promotions. Like, hey, you promote my course, I promote your course. That's a very common trade. Or they say, you know, I don't want to just sell something to my audience. I, I'll interview you. I'll interview you though, Sophie. I'll interview you about this topic, and then you can mention the course at the end. So that's a a, a lighter kind of collaboration. So, um, but but usually a relaunch where. You're, you're done, you've done the launching to your audience. Now you want to relaunch and get the same number of sales or higher. You need several, you need three or four JV partners who have, you know, similar audience sizes, three or four with a similar audience size as you to match the same number of sales with one audience, with, with your audience. Does that make sense? So you need at least three or four similar sized audiences to match the same number of sales as your audience. So that's the second strategy. Okay. And, uh, and Sophie, you can jump in any time if you want to ask anything about this. Oh, it's so. very interesting because I haven't thought I've done um, since, since I published a book last summer, I, last year in the summer, I got uh, tons of people um, getting me to look, do live on Instagram with them about the book. And I've never thought of using the same thing to I really like the idea of doing it and a soft approach to say hey just like I've loved since I yeah. worked with you that I did yeah. my first webinar I got 300 people signed up for the webinar and wow. um, I think about 40 percent of people turned up it was free and and at the end of the webinar I, I for the first time in my life talked about the fact that I was running this course without it feeling yucky because I felt uh, very much like yeah. I told it's, people it's, ahead of time I'm going to tell you about my course right you know Good. and so i had maybe i you don't know transparent seven or eight sign up to the course after that yeah. webinar but the thing yeah. is it was an experience i really enjoyed i felt i had to learn to do a large webinar on zoom which i'd never done i had a bit of a flappy panic because all of that happened in the course of 72 hours the 300 sign ups and i was yeah. like <gasps> you know I, I announced it on thursday and then by friday or saturday i had 300 yeah. people signed up yeah so yeah. it was all a very interesting experience and yes the main thing was this approach of like using real humanity with people and saying 
hey, you know, I have got this, do you like it? But I said in the webinar, you have absolutely no obligation to buy this course. You know, right. yeah, if you want to learn more, there's more free article on my website. If you want to learn more, there's this, and then there's also this course. Yes. And that's the first time in my life I did that without having this kind of clenching inside that I was Oof. thinking, oh, now I'm going through the yucky right. thing. <laughs> I'm so, so, so I'm glad. Really liking the idea of using yes. that, connecting with people and saying, hey, you know, Right. Because it doesn't feel like I'm doing it for the marketing. It would yes. be a, yes. a, a collaboration. That's right. So I really yes. like yes. the idea of that. And I'd not thought about using it in that way. Do you right. see what I mean? When yeah, people invited is. me to, yes. to do lives about a book, yes. I was just excited to talk about a topic. About yeah. Same thing with about. now that, especially now that you have taught that webinar, you've had that experience now, you could maybe there are some friends and colleagues who would be willing to have you teach the same webinar to their audience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on the back of the first webinar, I got invited to give a presentation to a very large group of midwives, wow. which was completely outside of the audience and normally interact on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. So, wow. yeah, Instant. sometimes Very... I think you've, you, it's kind of hard to grasp how much impact, um, you know, how yes. much impact one, That's right. because you might just yeah. not realize that there's lots of people who now suddenly know who you are Yes, because yes. you got introduced to them by somebody they trust. That's right. Um, it's very. That's why I say borrow audiences because it's it is somebody's audience, and you're you're temporarily borrowing it uh, because you're like you said you're you are transferring the trust from from them trusting their audience or th them trusting that thought leader to that trust is borrowed to you. So um, one thing I want to say uh, about the webinar thing is uh, I I encourage you to try doing a free to attend paid recording webinar. Um, you saw me recently do this, you know, with, with my audience. Um, I think, Sophie, you said earlier when you did the free webinar, people saw that they could get the recording later, even if they didn't show up, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a typical free webinar is, hey, here's a free webinar and sign, please sign up for it. And even if you can't show up, even if you don't pay, whatever, you still get the recording and whatever notes or whatever, if there's anything like that. For me, I've done that many times in the past. Of course I have, you know, in the beginning of my business, I did that a lot because that's what I thought I was supposed to. And then I got, I got like, hmm, how come free webinar, typical attendance rate is 15 to 35%. Typical attendance rate in my industry. Anyway, I've talked to a lot of people. Sophie, you said you got 40% attendance, which is really high, okay, for a free webinar that people can just get the recording. This is why I said, how do I get people to sign up with more thoughtfulness and actually show up rather than just collect recordings as many people myself have included done. That you recordings. never watch. That we never watch. Yeah, because there's no, there's like, you think I'll do that tomorrow and then life gets busy and of you never course. end up watching. There's always something interesting tomorrow. <laughs> I've signed up to so many things like that. There's always Ooh, something. that looks exciting. I'm going to sign up to that. <laughs> And because there's no pressure of anything. When That's you right. Do that people, people often, in fact, ask me, when does the recording expire? I'm like, uh, I didn't even think about expiring the recording. I mean, it's, it's, on, it's on YouTube. Why would it expire <laughs> or take it down? Like, why do I? It's even more administrative work for me to think about when I'm going to expire recording. So I don't even. Anyway, the, the strategy I was saying, free to attend paid recording. So, hey, you can sign up and attend for free. Like, like, just like it says, free to attend. Yeah. You can attend for free, or if you can't attend, you can buy it later for $30 or whatever yeah. nominal amount, because I really believe in this webinar. It's, it's going to be worth $30 if you just want to buy the recording afterwards, with, along with the notes. And also, after I, I, the recording is done, and when I sell the webinar, I also give a few bonus videos that I've already recorded somewhere else, a little few bonus segments that are part of the same top, around the same topic. So it becomes a real product. It's on my website now, right? So I, and when you do a free to attend paid webinar, anyway, I, I will link to another video where I talk about that. But I was going to say the third strategy, the first strategy, as I said, is <laughs> launch three to four years plus later uh, so that you have time to build your audience um, and, and give them more spaciousness before you talk about that topic or launch that topic again. Second strategy was get at least three to four JV partners, with, hopefully with a similar sized audience or bigger. And the third strategy is to um, launch it again. You could do it before three to four years. You can launch it within six months or even within a year, except this time you have to make it different enough than just buy the recording. 
So when I say different enough, I mean, you have to add some more value to that. So it's like, you could say, hey, um, I'm launching this topic. You don't have to say it again. It's like, I'm excited to, 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 to launch this program about the topic that you had launched six months ago. It will have a group discussion or it will have a, a group coaching or it'll have some one-on-one -on -one time with me or it'll include this other major topic that I didn't get to talk about before. It has to be different enough where it almost feels like a different product and there, therefore your audience sees it as a different product and as its own fresh launch rather than, oh, she just, this is something I saw six months ago. Therefore, yeah. I've already made my decision. You see what I mean? So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for asking. All right, one here, one thing here from uh, one message here from Tara. Thank you um, about the question about well, why would we, we need three to four JV partners with a similar size audience to match the same number of sales as we have? The reason is because um, our audience has we built trust with our audience over time, and that trust means a lot, which is why it has a certain number of sales. Whereas with a JV partner with someone introducing us to their audience, um, it's like 25% of the power of, of the trust. Even if they have the same size audience, not, it won't have the same amount of sales because they're not in our audience yet. They're not our people literally yet. It's someone else's people and maybe a quarter of them. If we're lucky, we'll say, well, I don't know who you are, but uh, I trust you enough that so-and-so is in recommend, I'm gonna buy your thing. You see what I mean? So it, it, even saying 25% is, might be high, <laughs> but this is why I say, gosh, if you can get three or four or even more JV partners with a similar size audience as you, then, then you can expect the same amount of sales as you did when you launched to your, to your own group. 